Got a good one up here, man. Excellent. It seems like these triple tail are hanging out in certain zones. I don't know why exactly. Maybe it's a little different current flow. Maybe there's something different on the bottom, but it seems like it's random just out in the middle of nowhere between Flamingo and the Cape Sable area. I let it get about this far away from his face, no reaction. You know, like three, four, five casts, and then finally I get it to where I can tell that it's gonna be right in there. Oh, you got him, nice job, dude! Ha ha ha! Oh, yeah! Come on, come on, oh! He ate it, he ate it, he ate it! Nice, baby, yeah, that's what I'm talking about! I thought you said you had to- I got him, relax. Oh, dude, he just ripped my boat off! Oh. Awesome, look at that big boy! The Hawks K Saltwater Experience, presented by Yellowfin, with Captain Tom Rowland and Captain Rich Tudor. You ready to roll? Yeah, man. Put my fly rod in here a little bit earlier. What do you want to uh, go look for? Let's go back there and see if we can find those triple tail. Yeah. Yeah, they've been. We don't have a lot of time. We run back there. We're going to know if they're there pretty quick. Yeah. We can. Uh, Maybe check a couple of redfish spots on the way, or yeah. we got some redfish spots we can check on the way home if it's not happening. That's a good call. Let's do it. I do a, wouldn't mind a triple tail for dinner, that's for sure. Okay. I'm ready. Yep. Probably real calm back there. I think so. We've been seeing a lot of triple tail. It's been good. Um, you know, same spot we found them last time, and then even closer to Flamingo now. There's um, quite a few of them in, 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 uh, in shallow, right up on the uh, shorelines. Yeah. It's just a matter of finding the big ones. Yeah. I've heard there's some bigger ones than what we saw even last year, and I thought those were pretty good size. So that triple tail fishery's really gotten good, and, and uh, nice thing about that is, is they're delicious eating and, uh, and, and really fun to fish for. They are fun to fish for, and you know, you had said, you know what, remember when we did that other uh, triple tail fishing, what if we ran over there? You know, we don't have a lot of time today. Let's just run over and see if it's happening again. And we got the skiff, and it's like, yeah, man, let's do it. Let's see what if that's happening because I had a really good time. Well, doing the that nice thing about time. it is, you know, especially in the skiff, you can, you know, look for redfish on the way and stuff like that, and have all the options open. Um, you know, red fishing wasn't happening at that time, so we uh, we just kept going a little further, and the next thing you know, boom. There's one right there. You can spin around. And is this where the big one lives? There's some big ones off this point, for sure. Let's uh, put the trolling motor down and we'll circle back around, see if we can't catch them. This is right where we were last year. We kept coming right down through here. Yep. Right to this point. That was with the bit, with the uh, 26. Yeah. You could fish these guys out of basically any boat you could get over here. Yeah. That's a nice thing. You don't have to get shallow to catch these. I'll tell you what. Last year, we had some kind of a strange phenomenon that was going on that was making this uh, triple tail fishing really good. And we got to take advantage of it. We went over there in the 26, we went over to the Cape and nothing to it. You just idle around and there they are. They're, sometimes they're as black as a trash bag in the water. And last year, they had all kinds of red spots on them and like as red as a strawberry. So you're seeing a couple of different colors. You're either seeing red or you're seeing black or sometimes their white belly is there. And the color of the water made it to where it's like, man, I don't know how you could be less camouflaged. Like when we catch those redfish and stuff like that, we're like amazed at how much, like when you let them go in the water, how much they look like they're surrounding. But in that kind of cloudy water and you have a black fish, or a fish that's showing his white belly. I mean, those two colors in that water makes them very, very easy to see. All right, look at him laying there nice and sideways. He almost looks like a bass, doesn't he? Big one, a big one. Look at that white belly. You know, like almost every fish we fish for down here is hard to see, except that one. It's like, can you see that black thing floating way out there? Yes, I can. Okay, well that's our fish, that's what we're going for. And they're literally out of the water. Like sometimes we saw yeah. their, their pectoral fin is Flapping waving like a, like a flag. Here I am, Yeah, Come get me. exactly. Yeah. Freaking angle, he's facing right at us. Facing a little left now. Afraid I'm gonna touch him. His pectoral is just waving in the breeze. 
Wow. Oh, are you kidding? That did not seem like something that would spook him after. I'm surprised that spooked that fish. He'll float right back up. We get out there kind of immediately. And I'm like, well, this seems like a great opportunity to, uh, to, to catch the biggest triple tail I've ever caught on fly because it's very calm. We're getting very, very close to these things. There's not gonna be any problem with that. And the fly is something that generally you can land very close to something without spooking it. And I was very surprised. You know, I throw in there and as the fly's in the air, it spooks the fish. Well, you know, that was just a fluke. And then I try again, same thing. And then I try putting it further away from them and just not having a lot of luck. And I'm kind of like, you know what? These are really nice ones. I don't want to mess this up. So maybe we'll try with the spin. He, I got oh, him. and he saved it immediately. I hope I got him. We're going to have to be ready with a net. <laughs> just sl sl do back, be able to answer, just sling them in the boat. There we go. OK. <laughs> Pretty sure I got that one. <laughs> Pretty sure I got that one. That's awesome, man. Now that one's another one of those just under legal size to keep, I think. Very nice. I'd be disqualified in the MLF. <laughs> Why is that? Can't touch the boat. Fish at the boat. Oh, I see one. Okay. You want to go back in? Here, very, very silver one. If you're going to act that way. <laughs> it's got too many spines and stuff for me to be reaching down and grabbing him while he's flopping. Okie dokie. That's one for the boat. I just need one for the plate. Yep. Oh, you got him. Nice job, dude. Ha, <laughs> ha, Wow. The Hawks K Saltwater Experience, presented by Yellowfin, is brought to you in part by Hawks K Resort. Find what lures you. Lawrence, America's number one fish finder. B&W Trailer Hitches, towing adventure. Mercury Marine, go boldly. St. Croix Rods, the best rods on earth. Yeti, built for the wild. And by Ameritrail Trailers. Daiwa, Marathon, Power Pole, and Reflex Boat Decking. Once we got to the certain area, it seems like these triple tail are hanging out in certain zones. I don't know why exactly. Um, maybe it's a little different current flow. Maybe there's something different on the bottom, but it seems like it's random just out in the middle of nowhere between Flamingo and the Cape Sable area. And they've just been thick. You know, it used to be the only place I knew to find them was on, on the floating crab pots. You know, you go out on the stone crab buoys and, and right. you know, they'd be in a big line and you could just run down the stone crab buoys. We'd, we'd done that a few times. And, and you know, every 10 buoys or so, maybe there'd be a triple tail. But that was literally on a structure. Or the other place we found them is offshore, you know, when there's a piece of floating debris offshore. But for whatever reason, um, the last couple of years, they're just randomly floating with no structure whatsoever. And um, it's pretty cool because you're not relying on going out way out where the crab pots are. And during certain parts of the year, about half the year, pots aren't out there. Right. Um, season's over. So um, during that time of year, you don't have any structure to, to fish. But lately, they've been just randomly floating with no structure at all and just kind of dotted everywhere. Got a good one up here, man. Excellent. Golly, that's the kind we've been looking for. Look at that stud. Wow. It's either one big one. one or four little ones. I think that's one big one. Nope. Not gonna do it. Oh, I was casting the wrong side of them anyway. You know, you can kind of be really, really accurate with a, with a spinning rod if you throw past and use the rod one way or another, and you can drag that to right where you want it. So that's kind of the technique is throw a little bit past them and then use the rod to bring it right to their head and thump, you know, but it had to be perfect. Don't, don't spook them with it. Oh, I think my line touched him. That was going to be the shot, too. He 
might come back up. And you know, those triple tail, they're floating like this, and then they would just kind of rotate around. So if you threw too far away from them, by yeah. the time you got it here, now they're facing yeah, the they're other, right. other direction. So that was kind of an issue. But another issue was we were getting the bites and reeling and reeling and reeling and, and doing just like we've set the hook on them lots of times before, and they were just holding on to it and then would just let it go. That was weird. That was a good one. That was a really good one. I'll tell you what, they're not, they're like holding on to the bait. I think that's the same thing that happened with that first one. They're holding on to the bait. Maybe you gotta give them a, another little extra second. And we started working on that and um, we're kind of like, you know, let's give them a little bit more time. And sure enough, that's exactly what started working. You know, give them, like, you feel that thump thump. Yep. And, you know, give it like a one, two instead of just an immediate reeling like that. And uh, sure enough, man, we started, we started being able to catch them. All right, we're starting to get them on the boat. But now we just need to get one in the cooler. This one's the hardest one to catch because he's underneath that thing. He's hiding out. Oh, he's on the other side. Got him. Good. Good for you, man. <laughs> you know what the technique was, right? You had to let it suspend on the piece of debris. <laughs> that was cool. Little guy. Now the jig head worked pretty good on him, except he took it way down the hatch. <laughs> the four inch gulp was about the perfect weight to get really accurate That's casts. the one to throw weightless with, no, with yeah. no weight. Yeah, our biggest problem was we ran out of the four inchers. I know. Um, the three inchers, like I say, they're so much um, lighter that, that you need to add weight. I did a little uh, jig head um, setup. The lightest jig head we had was like an eighth ounce jig head. And that works pretty good. You just have to be careful it doesn't sink too fast because the, the real key is, is you can't see anything under a, uh, under a foot with that dirty water. Um, so when that fish is up on the surface, you've got to be able to throw your bait out there, keep your bait high enough to where you see your bait and make your bait end up an inch off his nose. Right. And if it was perfect, they'd eat it. And yeah. if it wasn't, they wouldn't. Did I let him eat it long enough this time, Tom? I think that one went down far enough. We just need to find a big one. Well, let's run up the uh, beach a little bit, see if we can't catch one for dinner. Kind of my favorite part about the triple tail is, is being able to eat them too. But we didn't have dinner at that point. We were catching quite a few that would have been legal a couple years ago at 15 inches, but now it's 18 inches. And 18 is a pretty good size one. Yeah. Um, and you know, you know, I know we'd had numerous shots. You had some great shots at big ones with the fly that didn't want to play. Um, we had some great shots at big ones with, with with the artificial that didn't want to play. And then you'd had that really nice one on that jumped off right before we got to the net. But you know, it was like. You know, we're having fun, we're catching lots, but we didn't have that big one for dinner. So that was kind of, you know, in my mind, all right, we got to catch one to bring home with us. Right. And, you know, it worked out just right because here's this big storm. We look over and we're like, well, there's the one we need. Good shot. Come on. All right, I'm in on this one. That's right there. <laughs> He just spun around in a circle, getting away from our baits. That was right in front of his nose. You know, and it's like the pressure's kind of on. Like, let's, if we don't get this one, we may have to pull the plug on this. Man, that's a big fish. Man, he ain't eating this stuff. All right, this is the one. This is the one standing between us and dinner. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to spool up one of these brand new Daiwa BG MQs. This reel is fantastic because with this MQ body, it is a really rigid, durable body. They've been able to put bigger gears in it. So what that means to us is that we can use a reel that is smaller and lighter 
the smaller and lighter reel helps me to make a more accurate cast to put that thing right in the strike zone. Sometimes that's just a, a little area right in front of the fish. So this is the reel that we're choosing, a 2500. With a 2500 reel, you're gonna be able to get about 150 yards of mono on there or up to about 220 yards of braid. Today, we're gonna use this 15 pound J Braid X Grand. This is a really good line. It's very smooth. I love the way it casts and it behaves well on the reel. So it's real easy to do. Um, we're just gonna take this line and uh, we're gonna tie a uni knot. And a uni knot is very easy to do. We have a tutorial on our uh, YouTube page. If you, if you can't follow here, you can go there. You just make a little loop like this, go through five times, go through five times like that. And as I pull this tag in, what's gonna happen, a lot of times we'll do this with a lure on, but today we're gonna do it just to tie on the spool. So I'm just gonna kinda tighten it down like that and what is left is a, a loop at the end. I'll go ahead and I'm, gonna, I'm going to tighten this down pretty tight with the tag end. And I'm gonna go ahead and um, cut this off. Right at the knot, okay? So now, here's my loop. I'm simply gonna put this, first you gotta open the bale, you don't wanna make that mistake. Open the bale and put this on and you wanna make sure that you're not cinches down right on this rubber gasket. So now that we have that cinch down onto the rubber gasket, that's gonna provide an excellent anchor point and we're simply just gonna reel in, reel in this line and I'm gonna hold it in my hand right here as tight as I can so I'm gonna keep tension on the line and reel it in on the spool as tight as I possibly can. You don't wanna reel it in all the way to the very edge of the spool because that's a way that you can have, you can get wind knots. You leave a little bit of extra spool, just about like that. So the spool is not completely full all the way to the end. I've left a little bit of an edge and that's gonna help the line to stay on the reel and not develop wind knots. When I cast really hard, it's going to uh, behave nicely. So now, all I do is cut this off, put a leader on, and we're ready to go fishing. Now this little reel is gonna be capable of catching anything that I'm gonna get into in Flamingo. I'm gonna pair it with a seven foot light action rod. This is the St. Croix. I love these rods. This is gonna be the perfect setup for me to fish in Flamingo. So you can find this reel, this rod, the line that we used, and in fact, you can find all the gear that we used at the link below and buy from Tackle Direct. Hawks K Saltwater Experience, presented by Yellowfin, is brought to you by Yellowfin, only in a Yellowfin. Hook. Tackle Direct, the world's premier fishing outfitter. Buff, built for ultimate sun protection. Waypoint, streaming the best hunting and fishing series. Download the app today. And by Bruno and Rod Holders. Nikon. Wiley X, Lithium Pros, and Golden Boat Lifts. It's hard for me to believe Saltwater Experience has been on for 17 years, and you can find every show for free on Waypoint TV. Go to waypointtv.com and download the app. Wow. Get me over there a little bit. Try again. Yeah, maybe to put the treble hook on for him. <laughs> I make plenty of good casts on that fish. You make plenty of good casts on that fish. We're using basically the same thing. And I'm like, okay, hang on a second. Let me try him with a fly. One of the things about the fly is that you can keep it in the strike zone longer than when you gotta keep this weighted lure right on the surface. And if you reel it too slow, it's gonna get down too deep and you're not gonna be able to see where it is. With the fly, you can keep it in that strike zone longer. Like I can just stop stripping it and it's just gonna sit right in front of his face. That's a good shot right there. Let me try to get a different angle no. so you're not pulling it towards him. That's good. 
I let it get about this far away from his face, no reaction. You know, like three, four, five casts, and then finally I get it to where I can tell that it's gonna be right in there. Oh, you got him, nice job, dude! Ha ha ha! Wow! Ooh, way to stick with it, nice work. Make one more strip and there it is. And Man, was, I couldn't believe you came tight on that. That was, that was really cool. You know, and then after that, it's around, it got around the trolling motor, it got all over the place. Something's not right. You want that trolling motor? Trolling motor's. Be careful, because it's not right. Okay, got him. What a mess. <laughs> Oh, a jumper too! <laughs> a jumping triple tail on fly, <laughs> right before the storm. Yeah, man. I, I, you know, after getting wrapped around a trolling motor and under the boat a few times and different things, I was, I was getting. Uh, dinner was looking like it was yeah, going to go the other way. It wasn't looking like dinner. It was looking like hungry. It's like the big tournament winning permit here. Yeah, feels like it. <laughs> He's big. Here you go. Big as a permit. Yeah, <laughs> baby. How about that? Right on. <laughs> Nice job. It. He's so Boy. big, he's got a remora on him. Golly. That's cool, man. Here comes the pliers. And that was fun, man. It was just it was just kind of fun to, you know, just keep trying, keep trying until it happens and and it did. Look at that prehistoric. That's cool. Sweet, dude. All right, he's going in the live well. Okay. Right on. Nice work. And guess what? Look at this storm approaching us rapidly. So let's roll. If we leave right now, we can probably get back just before we get wet. Sounds perfect. All right. That was cool, man. Thanks, thanks for, for, tail fishing thanks for being patient. I could tell it was running out. 